All right, so my name's Alan McNaughton, and I kind of decided that since we write so many papers in the various programs that we're in, I figured uh, for the first one I would do a video. So uh, talking about um, mentoring um, and all of the research and some of the articles that we had to read through as well as the text we had to read through, um, the first thing that I noticed was that mentoring can be fairly difficult to define. Uh, um, Bozeman and Freeney in their article in 2007 listed 12 different definitions found in the literature um, as they did their research and their lit review. And so depending on the application, mentoring can mean so many different things to so many different people. Um, they also mentioned in their article that there is a plethora of research. There is a lot of research out there that talks about mentoring, but one of the... Um, one of the things that they noticed or one of the conclusions that they drew from the research was that transferring each research study into various areas can be rather difficult. Um, the, the, there's a lot of research dealing with specific aspects of mentoring and um, talking about self-efficacy and those various options, but transferring those into a broader sense related to mentoring is rather difficult. Um, the uh, Cram's, uh, Karen Cram, I think in 1983, her dissertation is kind of considered the starting point for research and mentoring, uh, according to Bozeman and Franey anyway. Um, that's kind of where the research really kind of took off. There's a lot of research dating back all the way to, I want to say, the 15th century, according to the textbook, where they talk about mentoring and coaching and where the idea of coaching came from. But um, they kind of... Uh, Bozeman and Freeney kind of said 1983 is kind of really where the modern research started. Um, there's several components that are part of uh, the whole mentoring process, uh, at least according to Garvey, Stokes, and Magison in the textbook, and then also Bozeman and Freeney. They also mentioned several different areas um, and different kind of key components. Uh, Garvey's stages of developing, understanding, and planning um, are kind of some of the components. Uh, I really enjoyed reading the transcript of Garvey's um, description of mentoring. Um, I didn't listen to the actual um, recording. I figured I'd read the transcript, and I, I found that extremely helpful. Um, I do. I also know that Garvey mentions that you can kind of jump back and forth between these stages. You go through developing um, uh, the relationship with your mentor, you start understanding a certain problem and you start planning for the future or making a plan to combat whatever it is you're discussing and then you realize, oh, wait a minute, maybe we didn't do everything that we should have done and so you kind of go back to understanding or even all the way back to developing before you start over again. So you can kind of jump back and forth between those stages. Um, another key component that I noticed in the discussion boards as well as in the reading was that listening is very, very, very important. Um, they also uh, talked about, I want to say in the textbook, talking about, um, or I know Garvey actually talked about it in his transcript, talking about it not giving advice um, in a mentoring relationship because not everyone is willing to accept the advice. Um, he mentioned using comments like, funny you should mention that, here's a situation that I was involved in and here's how I handled it, kind of giving the opportunity for to share experience, but not necessarily saying, this is what you need to do. Um, and being able to listen is really, really difficult to, for the, as far as the active listening is kind of, is concerned. Um, allowing, when someone is speaking, listening and tr tr truly trying to understand what they're talking about is difficult. Um, most people, as soon as they start listening to someone, as soon as the, the person starts a sentence, we are automatically start starting to think about, okay, how are we going to respond to their sentence? And we don't even hear the rest of the sentence because we're, our brain is already moving on to the response. Um, another key component is that learning goes both ways. Um, I've been a part of this um, in my experience, um, being kind of a more of a veteran administrator in my school building. I have uh, the other administrator, the other assistant principal is only in his second year. And so he and I, but he, this is his second year in the school and my first year in the school. So it's kind of a, 
while there are certain aspects that he and I talk about and we kind of go back and forth about various situations and there's experiences that I say that I'm able to share that I've been a part of and then there are also things that he says, oh, that I understand that. Here's how we do things here. And it's allowed me to learn as well. Um, kind of given me a little bit of uh, a little bit more understanding and how learning does go both ways. Um, one of the other components that's mentioned in the textbook is that um, both individuals need to be a willing participant in any mentoring relationship. Um, uh, Garvey talks about chemistry in his transcript. Um, that they, they, they kind of need to get along and then they both need to be willing to participate. Uh, the mentor needs to be willing to take the time necessary to um, impart knowledge, I guess, or share experiences with the mentee. And the mentee needs to be willing to listen and accept the information provided and then either act on it or don't act on it. But um, they're, they're definitely, they need to be able to get along and appreciate the information that's being shared back and forth. Uh, Garvey also mentions clear expectations. In other words, this is, you are a part of a mentoring relationship, either a mentor or a mentee. But I also, um, in reading through, I want to say it was in the Bozeman and Freeney article, they talk about that that's not always the case where it needs to be clearly stated that you are in a mentoring relationship. Um, the administrator that I work with, we have not established that, okay, we're in a mentoring relationship. And I'm the mentor, you're the mentee. We haven't really talked about that, but we we do kind of understand the dynamics between the two of us and understand that, okay, both of us are learning in this situation. So while our expectations of the other person might not always be clear, there is an understanding of the situation. Um, one of the, the things that Garvey does talk about is s scheduling specific meeting times because if you just leave it up to yeah i'll talk to you again in a couple weeks and you don't set something up it usually tends to get pushed off to the side because other things get in the way and we get busy um one of the things that garvey also mentions is setting goals for the relationship like what do we want to accomplish the uh obviously the main goal for any mentoring relationship is for the mentee to be able to articulate their answers and function in their environment wherever that is successfully um he he uses the phrase allowing the mentee to stand on their own two feet so that's kind of you definitely definitely need the goal uh to set goals so clear expectations in certain aspects um scheduling meeting times if you are in a clear mentoring relationship setting goals but like i said that's not always the case for a mentoring um a mentor and a mentee uh, one of the things that's also mentioned in the text is reflection is a key component, or maybe Garvey said it in his transcript, that reflecting back on how things happened and the conversations that were had in order to make improvements. Um, kind of that self-reflection, once the mentor and the mentee have met and made a decision and moved on, reflecting back on how the situation played out and whether or not, okay, we need to, that didn't go as well as we thought, or, you know, kind of working back through and kind of a constantly evolving process. Um, there are several different types of mentoring that were mentioned in the text specifically. Um, the executive mentoring, and that's kind of where you see that in your in your the business side of things, kind of developing those high flyers that, you know, you hear the phrase, this person is being groomed for this position. And that's kind of a, okay, so that might imply some kind of a mentor-mentee relationship where the the person being groomed is the mentee. In other words, someone is imparting information to them or sharing experiences with them that's trying to give them a edge so that they can perform better than they have in the past. Um, you've got the mentoring in education is another type, and this can occur in several different areas. Um, you've got the whole idea of a beginning teacher, and you have a mentor teacher working with them. So on the teaching side of that, you can also do it between peers where you have um, a mentor and a mentee. Um, in high school, you have a senior student mentoring a freshman as they kind of navigate through the changes and all the things that you have to remember as a incoming freshman in a high school, keeping track of your homework and those kinds of things. So you've got the peer aspect of it. Um, you've got, the, like I said, the mentoring of the veteran and the beginning teacher. You've also got administrators that are like that. You've got um, where you might have a mentor and a mentee 
the mentee being at a school and the mentor being in central office. So there's several different um, components to mentoring education. Uh, one of the other mentoring um, types that's mentioned in the textbook that I kind of thought was interesting is e-mentoring, like using technology, um, uh, Skype and video conferencing and text messages and Instagram and social media and all those things kind of working um, at two separate locations almost. It doesn't necessarily have to be face-to-face. -face. Um, the textbook also mentions reverse mentoring where you, the mentor is actually the younger person and they're providing some of those new insights into education or into the area that they work. Um, this works particularly well in education as you've got new teachers who are coming in who are more versed in the latest research and the latest strategies for teaching because they're fresh out of school and they've got these fresh ideas and Coming into a school, you've got these veteran teachers who may have been teaching at the, school, the same school for 20 plus years, and you've got a new teacher coming in with these new ideas and kind of the reversing that whole process and um, allowing the veteran teacher to learn some of these new concepts from the newer teachers. And then finally, the last type mentioned in the text is self-mentoring, uh, and this kind of relies quite a bit on an individual effort. Um, it involves a process that you would follow independently. I know Dr. Carr has written a book on this that I've that I've um, read for a previous course that kind of really goes into the nuts and bolts and so it is a great opportunity especially for leaders I feel like self-mentoring is a great option because sometimes if you are the leader in your building you're the principal having a um, mentor for you is kind of difficult because you are the highest person in your building you'd have to go outside your building and then you start running into problems with access and that kind of thing so the self-mentoring piece I think is great for people who don't have readily ready access to a more experienced individual. So that's kind of the, the outline that I've come up with based on mentoring. And um, I hope you enjoy it.